Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and today I want to talk about Xbox's recent announcement that they want to be pushing for cross-platform supports, and why I'm hoping that this actually becomes a thing. Uh, if you're not aware, cross-platform essentially means that Microsoft wants to allow their Xbox community to play with PlayStation players and the PC crowd. Uh, right now, there are a few games that do this. The best example is Rocket League, but the thing is, is I don't think there's ever been a game that's actually had cross-platform support between Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. It sounds like Microsoft kind of wants to change this because they've sent out sort of a, an invitation to Sony to start to work together on maybe a couple of games in the future. The reason why I'm excited about this is that it has the potential to be amazing for gamers. When you go cross-platform, you are essentially doubling if not tripling your player base at any given moment, and the repercussions are widespread. One of the more obvious benefits is that this makes it much easier for the matchmaking system, your rank system, to pair people up that are around the same skill level significantly faster. When you have hundreds of thousands of people to choose from who are all playing at one time, you're more likely to get people that are around your same rank. Not only that, but you're also going to be able to find matches faster. Not only are you probably going to be paired with people that are around the same skill level, but because simply there's more people playing the game, getting into a round should be relatively quick. This is something that Rocket League, I think, has benefited from greatly. Even though Rocket League is an indie game, I mean, it's phenomenal. It's got, it's got that going on, but because it has cross-platform support between PC and PlayStation 4, and now it's going to be between PC and Xbox One, getting into a round is really quick, even though the game has been out for months now, and I really do think that that has helped with the longevity of the game. If you know you can jump into Rocket League for a couple of minutes and find a game relatively quick, you can get that instant gratification, you can enjoy the game for what it is, and you're not waiting around for five minutes just to get into a round. So that's another benefit. Uh, something that you might not have thought of is that this also allows for more of the smaller or less popular game modes to find a foothold and not wither away and die like they do in most multiplayer games. Battle of the 4 is a prime example of this. In Battle of the 4, even though it is live and well on PC, there are still plenty of people playing on it, uh, it still doesn't have the player base to sustain not only to being able to find every map that you want to play on. If you're looking for a DLC map, you're going to have a hard time finding it, but also if you want to play on one of the less popular game modes like Obliteration or Domination, for example, you're going to be incredibly hard pressed to find a server that even has a single player on it. As soon as you bring in double or essentially triple the amount of people that are now playing your game, you are now way more likely to find people that are like-minded who also want to have that experience and you're going to be able to find a server that has that game mode. This is just another example of why cross-platform could absolutely be incredible. Now, there will be some downsides, and we'll get to that here in a second, especially when it comes to first-person shooters. Some of you are already thinking right now, whoa, 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 I do not want to play against console players when I'm playing on PC, and vice versa. I mean, a controller versus a mouse and keyboard, there's going to be some problems there, and we'll get to that here in a second, but hopefully this was a good illustration of why cross-platform really can't be all that bad if it's done correctly and in the right situations, because it just opens up so many more possibilities because of your healthy player base. Uh, this also could be great for developers. If you're working on a multiplayer only game or you're an indie developer and you want people to buy your product, one of the concerns that I hear more and more is will this game last? Is your multiplayer game gonna have enough players behind it to allow it to extend in the future to be a worthy purchase? I hear this with Rainbow Six Siege, Star Wars Battlefront, you're gonna hear it in the next Battlefield game. This is a big concern that people have and if you're only on one platform and especially if you're an indie game, an indie multiplayer game, people are going to be very reluctant to buy your product because they just don't think that it's going to be sustainable and there isn't going to be longevity there. And so one way to remedy these fears is of course with cross-platform supports. If you have a game on PC, for example, that only has about 5,000 to 10,000 people playing on peak hours, well I wouldn't say that it's dead, it's still, it's still doing alright, it's definitely not a selling point. A lot of people when they would see those numbers, they would get a little suspicious that the game is going to last for much longer and they may not buy that
that product. But as soon as you bring in, let's say, Xbox and PlayStation into the mix, and it bumps it up to 15, 20, or even 30,000 people playing all at once, all right, we're now talking about a multiplayer game that has a healthy community. There's a lot more people to pull from. We go to all the benefits in, that we just talked about, and it's now a little bit more appealing for people that may have been on the fence. And so, just from this standpoint, it's also great for developers. Uh, where we start to run into some issues, though, is balancing between console and PC. Using a mouse and keyboard is, of course, going to function and perform differently compared to a controller. Some games, it's not going to matter. Rocket League is a prime example. You use one over the other, you're not going to have that much of an advantage or disadvantage, depending on which one you decide to use. As soon as we move on over into shooters, though, that's where we start to run into some problems. A lot of people on console simply are not going to want to fight against PC players because they don't have the advantage of a mouse and keyboard. There's always going to be that nagging feeling in the back of their mind that they're losing these firefights and they're not doing as well because they don't have the advantage of a mouse and keyboard. On the flip side of things, there also are going to be PC players that don't want to fight against someone who is using a controller. A prime example of this is Black Ops 3. In Black Ops 3, you have heavy aim assist even on PC when you switch on over to a controller. Some people were arguing on the interwebs that uh, this was giving them an unfair advantage. They could basically lock on to you and get free kills because of that heavy aim assist. And so it brings up a lot of interesting questions on how in the world would you balance all of this out? It may simply not be possible. Shooters may not work for cross-platform, at least between PC and the console, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it between Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Uh, if, uh, if you could play Call of Duty between PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, I don't really see that being a negative for any party. Like, I still think that that would be a nice step in the right direction. Yeah, the console or controllers are slightly different, but I don't think that they're so vastly different that one is going to perform better than the others, and so you're going to have all of the advantages that we talked about before. And so just in general, I am really excited to see where all of this leads. It may not go anywhere. Sony may have no intention of working with Microsoft. Or maybe this is a really bad idea to begin with. Maybe there is some looming presence that I'm not aware of. Some, some huge drawback of having more cross-platform games that I just don't understand. Uh, but from my viewpoint, from my standpoint, it's good, from gamer, it's good for gamers, it good, it's good for developers, and I cannot wait to see where all this leads. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's video. I thought this would be a fun topic to talk about and so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, give me your thoughts. Do you agree with uh, the things that I discussed in today's video? Do you completely disagree? Would you like to have more cross-platform games? Let me know down below. Uh, but yeah, until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.